Have you ever heard of the Chinese Warren Buffett? Li Lu is the founder of Himalaya Capital, an investment company with a portfolio value of $1.9 billion that is invested in US stocks and a total of around 30 billion in assets under management, with the majority being invested in Asia and China more specifically. Li decided to become an investor after listening to a Buffett lecture at Columbia University in 1993. It was Munger, the vice chairman of Berkshire and right hand of Buffett, who called him the Chinese Warren Buffett in 2019 and said that Li was the only outsider he has ever trusted to invest his money. It was Li who introduced Manga to BYD, the Chinese EV company. This turned out to be one of Berkshire's most successful investments, turning a $232 million investment into $5.6 billion in just over a decade. Not bad. In this video, we will reveal Li's US stock portfolio. We will break down his largest investments one after another and I will tell you a little bit about the investment and why they could be interesting for you too. Let's go. What's up everyone? This is FU Academy, your channel for financial education and on this channel I share lifestyle, investing now and educational videos just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. So first of all, how do I know what stocks Lee owns in the US? Funds with at least $100 million in assets under management have to disclose their equity holdings every quarter and these have to be filed 45 days after each quarter. I actually got this data from dataroma.com which collects and investment information of 80 of the biggest investment companies, including Lee's Himalaya Capital Fund. As always, I will leave a link in the description below. But 13F filings only show you long equity positions in US listed stocks and ADRs. Short positions or investments in stocks that are listed outside the US are not included, so they might not always give you the full picture, but still a very good insight with lots of valuable information. So let's see what Lee's portfolio is about. The largest investment of Lee's portfolio is Micron Technology, making up 33.9% of the total portfolio. A bit of a surprise to me, Micron is one of the largest semiconductor companies that is specialized in building memory and storage chips. And the company has two main technologies, DRAM and NAND flash memory chips. But what is that? To put it simply, DRAM is a temporary storage in personal computers and mobile phones. Once your laptop, for example, is turned off, any data that was in your RAM is lost. NAND on the other side is a permanent storage that keeps data on the drive even after turning the device off. Today, most SSD cards and laptops, for example, use NAND flash storage, the car, data center industries and many others are also adopting the standard. So that's why Micron products are mostly used in cars, phones, servers and laptops. Last year, Micron made over $27 billion in revenues, up 29% year over year. 44% of those revenues were generated in the US, 24% in Taiwan, 29% in the rest of Asia and 3% in others. Micron makes 72% of their revenues from DRAM, 25% from NAND and 2% from others. It currently has a market cap of $67 billion, a PE ratio of 7 and a dividend yield of 0.8%. Very interesting stock pick to start with. Micron could be a 5G play. 5G devices need 50% higher DRAM and double the NAND compared to 4G. But Micron faces major competition in the chip maker space from Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung, Intel and other tech giants. And in position number two, we have a classic value pick, Bank of America. It makes up 24.2% of Lee's total portfolio. It's the second largest bank in the US with more than $2 trillion in total assets just behind JP Morgan. The bank has been investing into their digital setup. Customers can access contactless ATMs and connect with customer service through video calls. They also launched voice assistant Erica, which is already used by over 19.5 million users. On top of that, they also launched digital payments network Zelle, which allows users to send real-time payments to family and friends. In 2020, Bank of America made over $85 billion in revenues, down 6% year over year. That was mainly driven by a decrease in interest rates due to the pandemic. For banks, a lowering of interest rates is bad because interest payments on loans is usually their main income stream. 88% of those revenues were generated in the US, 5% in Europe and the Middle East, and 5% in Asia. 
The bank currently has a market cap of $282 billion, a PE ratio of 11, and a dividend yield of 2.5%. We know that Buffett and Munger love Bank of America, and it turns out that Lee follows the footsteps of his mentors. The Fed recently increased the federal funds rate by 0.75%, which was the largest hike in almost 30 years, and a few more could follow this year. And banks could be one of the major beneficiaries of rising interest rates. And in position number three, we have Google's holding company, Alphabet. It makes up 23.3% of Lee's total portfolio if we add up his positions in the two Google share classes. Alphabet is a holding company and was created after a restructuring of Google in 2015. Now Alphabet holds Google, which holds services like Google Ads, Google Cloud, YouTube, Android, and other bets, their venture arm. In 2020, Alphabet made over $182 billion in revenues, 47% of those revenues were generated in the US, 30% in Europe and the Middle East, 18% in Asia Pacific and 5% in other Americans. Alphabet makes 93% of their revenues from Google services, which includes Google search and YouTube ads, 7% from Google Cloud and less than 1% from other bets. It currently has a market cap of $1.5 trillion, a PE ratio of 23 and no dividend yields. Digital advertising still makes up the majority of Google's revenues and that's the company's cash cow but google is heavily investing into other areas like cloud computing and consumer hardware and that's where the future growth of the company could come from after all not a super speculative investment of lee here he went all in on that stock in the last quarter adding over 2 million google shares in total at a time where the stock dropped by almost 30 percent from its all-time highs which could have been a smart move in position number four, we have Berkshire Hathaway. It makes up 13.1% of Lee's total portfolio. Not a big surprise to see the position of his two mentors, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, in his investment portfolio. Berkshire is a beast of an investment company with over 40 investments in publicly traded stocks. On top of that, Berkshire also holds a mega portfolio of over 60 private companies that are not listed on the stock exchange, also known as operating subsidiaries. These non-public investments Investments are mainly in the insurance, railroads, energy and manufacturing business. In that list, you can find big names like the car insurance company Geico. In 2020, Berkshire made over $245 billion in revenues. Berkshire makes 26% of their revenues from insurance premiums earned from their insurance business, 52% from sales and service revenues, 2% from leasing revenues, 17% from railroads, utilities and energy revenues, and 3% from interest and dividends, mainly from their stock investments. It currently has a market cap of $656 billion, a PE ratio of 62, and no dividend yield because Buffett believes that money can be better spent in other ways. With the Berkshire position, Lee gets an instant diversification and the know-how of one of the best investors of our lifetime. By the way, if you want to learn more about Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway portfolio, then check out my dedicated video in the link. And last but not least, in position number five, we have Apple. It makes up 5.5% of Lee's total portfolio. Apple is one of the largest consumer electronics companies globally. They sell a variety of products like the iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, AirPods, and more. On top of that, Apple is also big on services like Apple Music, iCloud, Apple Card, and Apple Pay. In 2020, Apple made over $270 billion in revenues. 45% of those revenues were generated in North and South America, 25% in Europe, 15% in China, and 15% in the rest of Asia Pacific. The iPhone is Apple's most valuable product. Since 2008, it has been the company's main source of revenue. And although Apple has has diversified its product line with the iPad, Apple Watch, AirPods and services, the iPhone is still responsible for around 50% of Apple's revenues. Apple makes another 9% of their revenues from the iPad, 10% from the Mac, 11% from variables like the Apple Watch or AirPods and 21% from services. Apple is currently the most valuable company in the world with a market cap of $2.7 trillion, leaving Microsoft and Alphabet behind them. The company currently has a PE ratio 
ratio of 28 and a dividend yield of 0.54%. Lee is double dipping into Apple. Berkshire, his fourth largest position, already has a 40% Apple exposure, but absolutely no surprise here. Apple is an absolute cash machine with a wide moat and long-term consistent earnings growth. There you have it, a breakdown of Lee's US equity portfolio. What you can see in this portfolio breakdown is how concentrated this portfolio is, but please bear in mind that this is only his US equity portfolio. He also has a large concentration on Asian investments, especially in China. His US portfolio is pretty much in line with his mentors Buffett and Manga. His fourth largest investment is Berkshire and he also holds Bank of America and Apple, which are the two biggest positions at Berkshire. But what do you actually think about this portfolio? Is that a portfolio you would invest in? What would you do differently? As always, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that this video could bring some value to you if you like what you saw and you want to support this channel and please make sure you subscribe Thank you very much for doing that and peace.